All right, then I'll call this meeting to order for uh, July the 16th, 2019. <clears throat> the result of the agenda for the July 16th regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Florio. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the July the 2nd council meeting uh, be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> okay, so number four, reception delegations. First, 4.1, we have Amy Shaw here with her concerned citizens of North Parkland. Uh, so we'll ask you, come forward and, and uh, make your presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank you. Do you want to sit up here, Amy, or are you comfortable there? I'll take the podium, you know, give us a chance to hear you. You're good there? Okay. Go ahead. I'd like to thank you for letting us come to talk to you tonight. And I'd like our members to say who they are. As yeah. Um, where are you from? Pat, Richard, Howard, from Swan River. Uh, Lola's from Chalkton, from Swan River. Amy Shaw from here. And Fulberton from Swan. Yeah, I'm from Swan. Welcome. <laughs> okay, then I would like to tell you what it is we're trying to do. We have some new members. Um, we just like to review some things. But we've been asking for a 24-7 supportive residential facility for those who are mentally ill and or addicted, where they can stay for anywhere up to a year if necessary. And then talking with Manitoba Housing, they have suggested that we have a second story of apartments they help us with our money, and that in turn would help pay some of the operating costs. I'll just leave it at that and you know, go on to the rest. Um, I approached the, our local planning for some stats and um, there definitely is a need for people in our valley and uh, the nearby uh, First Nations communities to have a facility where they are able to uh, get support and guidance in a supported facility uh, where they can stay longer than a few weeks or a few months. Um, it's known that uh, a short stay just is not helpful. People go on to their old kind of lives if they have just a short stay in a facility. We are thinking about a much longer stay for uh, people as they need it. Um, I guess um, one of the concerns that we have is that we have uh, sometimes tried to uh, get PMH more interested in helping us to fund something uh, like this or uh, even accept that there is a need and we aren't getting very much support there in fact you know we, we try to find out with uh, they have a McTavish house um, in Brandon that has um, that puts people up for a time when they need it a uh, temporary type of place and uh, we can't even get uh, who funds this this facility once they find out that it's we who are wanting the information we, we get cut out we don't hear anything from them and we know that it seems like they are funding or most of it and so we're kind of blocked out. So we're not very impressed with 
the way the DNA sees us, um, you know, we're trying to do something that is needed here. But anyway, so that was one of the concerns we have about that part of it. Other than that, I guess, you know, there, there's all kinds of things. Oh, yeah, well, Penny is the head, yes, the CEO of Penny is uh, the head of uh, the PMH. Penny Gilson. But the thing that gets me most of it is the idea that three of us went, Pat, Carolyn, Quill, and myself, Dr. Karen, to Penny. And she came blustering out, she was in a hurry to go to another meeting, but informed us that mental illness was not a health issue. It belonged to the community. And then she came to an end service here in Swan River and spoke and said it to several other people just shortly afterward. So I guess if she feels like that, that's why we're getting very little interest from her. But as far as I'm concerned, we've had five of the board of P and of H help us with our uh, proposal and uh, work very well with us. <laughs> so it seems as if it's just Penny that's our problem. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, on uh, 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 so that it means they ran in the study from South Korea to what he wanted the field center team to solve here. So in one hour and a half, we could for our people to the world. All the board is here, and there's a board in South Korea to their family, so it's close to home, and plus we need a field center team to solve here. It's good for the families and uh, the people that have the uh, uh, mental issues and also the uh, addictions. So, so that's why um, um, we support our group here to, to build this uh, treatment center in this one. And all other, uh, there's one that will be one uh, uh, 10 bed, three, uh, build up uh, uh, to the center, but for the other, other uh, towns near the fall, the third first nations that are closer to the park, but here in Chandler, we make a lot for in the group for South Korea, Napa King, Birch, Bob, Pine Creek. We're all the lots of uh, first nations that need that is the main area for us. We, we do all the shopping here, and uh, we do the banking here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so uh, we need uh, this central area for us. It's closer to home, supports are here, and, and um, you can also bring the bring in more business here in this one And that's my uh, <coughs> support this group. Thank you. Yeah, I and mean, myself, if there's a great need, I was also in the region of Health Court and I had a lot of complaints that there was a big need in this area for something a long term. I know that some of the hospitals kept them for a week or two, but that's not not good enough. They're back out on the street and they're back to you know, in their own ways of living. So I agree with all these ladies that we need, need something in Swan River that's long term for these people. We're not hurt. It's always, it's always uh, the money problem. I know I serve in a lot of organizations, always. Money is the problem. Hopefully, that people can maybe help us in some way to 
because I know everybody needs it up north. And the short term is not good enough. Also with my background. <laughs> Being a nurse a long time ago from middle school, I, I've seen a lot of that kind of stuff. So this, this committee to have something that's one of the that's more centralized and Okay, well, <clears throat> thank you, and uh, you know, on all the your efforts that you're you're doing, we, we we've been talking about this, I think, for a little bit of time since I've been here, and a few of you have been familiar with the new faces as well. But I'm just wondering, Lou Alley, you mentioned, you know, the other First Nations and all that, and, and, and I think that lobbying maybe with other chiefs and councils as well, that might be a a good thing as well, and, and uh, that's something that we can do. I'm sorry, I can do. I can't I'm sorry. I was just uh, commending you on, on your efforts, but I was talking about Luella's um, uh, comments about you know the need for the First Nations as well, and, and I was saying that um, the support of chiefs and councils as well, from Sapatoya to Wisque to Pine Creek would be good to have as lobbying efforts as well. And, and you know, maybe that's something that we can talk with them when we speak with them as well as as well as yourselves, because the law you know, you're saying that sometimes you feel that your your voice maybe is not completely heard from PMH or maybe from the province and and maybe with a few other voices behind you maybe you can get some place with that. So never no promises with that, but definitely some other avenues for sure. Go ahead. I just wondered how the old ladies got to speak, and then you cut me out. Oh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see your hand go up, but go ahead and let you speak. <laughs> they cut it off quite a few times. I was sitting right behind you when I see this I just wanted to just add to this. Uh, I mean, it's obvious you're here to um, solicit the support of the town in whichever way that could happen. I understand in the past that there's been discussions about helping out with a piece of property, for example. And uh, I'll, I'll be frank, I come here from three different vantage points, and, and, and my involvement on CCMP is, is a result of that. Number one, um, they have uh, you know, approached me to engage me as their project manager at such time as this would go ahead. But secondly, just as a concerned citizen, um, I have regular uh, connection and contact with our homeless people on the street, uh, those who for various reasons are on the sidelines of society. And they are there, the, the ones that I have contact with, a lot, a lot of them are there for one of two reasons, mental health issues or addictions. Uh, the, <clears throat> the third reason that I'm here is as having built for uh, Echo Apartments for Canadian Mental Health. I have seen the need, and we're we're in, in the works of, of building a, a, another one in Swan, uh, some more emergency suites, and uh, I've had some preliminary discussions with Ron and Derek Harvey and Derek a little bit about that. But CMHA has, in the last couple of years, had to make a choice not to. Uh, house people with addictions. They're just simply not equipped for that. And so while all four of the Echo Apartments started out as being uh, an opportunity for, home, for a home for people with mental health issues or addictions, they've had to just single it down to mental health issues just, just in admittance of the fact that they are not equipped to deal with rehabilitated people with addictions. And so this facility is intended to fill that gap, and I, I do, I really do believe that that is a gap. And I mean, there's no, I don't mean to, I'm preaching the choir, I'm sure, when I talk about the homelessness being a real need across the country. It's a real need, it's one river, and, and the addictions problem is, is is feeding that need tremendously. So I uh, I really think this is filling a, a gap in services there. Okay, thanks, Don. Go ahead, Councillor Mike. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, I'm part of this energized team who embarrassed me with their with their energy all the time and how hard and passionate you have. And it's appreciated. It is what you do is appreciated by the community. I just noted that the municipal government is the only one that stepped up. Your municipal government is the only one that stepped up to date and offered something. The land which we've offered, I don't see the province 
past or present uh, provincial government stepping for you. Lots of chatter, lots of encouragement, absolutely. Nor have I seen the fit and the, some of the data that's coming out. North Park, then, where we live, has some of the highest incidents of mental illness and meth methamphetamine, the new boy on the block of anywhere in Manitoba. So they keep giving us all the grants that things are going to happen. I haven't seen it yet. I'm concerned about that as a, as a human being, as a parent. I, can, I believe Greg Nesbitt is going to be here for the rodeo. I'd encourage you to talk to MLA Wolchuk, and Mr. Nesbitt is here. He's a special assistant to the Minister of Health. And if he's coming up, I, I'm comfortable to say that we should be able to get a meeting with him. Because it's banging on the door, that's for sure. We, we have to do that. And to say there's no money, if that story has happened forever. And my taxes, like yours, I'm not aware of them ever going down. So there's, there's money. It's who gets the money where, who nudges them more effectively. So just if we don't deal with specifically the meth issues, we'll have a bigger problem than we can imagine. It will cost a lot more money than the amount of money it costs to build a building. So uh, I encourage you to keep uh, nudging the, the powers that be. I certainly, I certainly will, and I'm sure our team will. So thank you for that much you do. And when I could add a couple more things, uh, we had a meeting and uh, one of our members from South the way I came to that meeting, she had had a client that was problem with addiction and wanted to get off of her addictions. And so this person took her to, she wanted to make an appointment before she came to see somebody of mental health. When she got here, gone home. Nothing in place of that. Went along to Dauphin. This person had the skull marks on the neck from trying to hang herself from suicide. And Dauphin said she didn't have enough mental illness problems to put her up there. So she took her to the fall where there was no help. Back to South West. And he's on the drugs again. Nothing happened. And then we've been working with another one, and I'm going to name this one Daniel Burkhardt. And Daniel is in Minnesota's because of his dog, the only thing that feels he loves, loves him, and he loves that dog. But there again, we started on March the 16th to work with Daniel. We've been working with mental health about it every month. Another meeting, another meeting. But in the end, Dan has given up. And why wouldn't he after all this length of time and no help? And these people that we're talking about and trying to help are people who need help when they want the help, not just some other time. And that's why it was so important to have this place or they could come and get the help as they need it. Pat, I have a suggestion that may or may not be you know, a good one for you, but uh, I'm thinking if, if this council wrote a letter to PMH and you know, sort of briefly outlined what we're up against, I'm wondering, because up till now, I don't know if that has happened. Uh, I know you have stood behind us with what was needed, but if you were to write a letter as a council and stating that there's a need for this and uh, you know, we can't even find out where money is going into for some of the stuff that's going on. So anyway, I'm wondering if that's a possibility. Yeah, I think it's a possibility. Yeah, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. And we could, we could also aid and uh, give you some help. In. Well, I, that was going to be the next thing I was going to say. Yeah. That we might need some some advice from you on that letter, but I think that we could probably put something together. Yes, and just to make some noise about it, yeah. because you are our administrators of that. Right. Yes, that would work. We, uh, we have been... Uh, I think assured that we would be able to get funding for a building but before we can apply for that we need assurance 
that we have money for operating, so we can't start until we have operating expenses promised us. But I wanted to hand out a paper just to, uh, it's a summary telling uh, a bit about our organization. And, uh, please don't put it in the garbage or <laughs> in the shredder. Uh, I will just pass it. That never happens. And, um, <laughs> it's closing through a Okay, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll get those copies uh, to us. Does any other member of council have any questions or comments? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it, and we'll be uh, in, in touch. You know, what you over thank that information? You. Thank you. Thank you. And this is the map of the distances that people have to put up with since we're so far away from the uh, city and uh, health. Have a good rest of the evening. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, Mr. Cole, you want to pray for us? Um, uh, Pascal Hardy Company. Are they out there right now? Pascal Hardy. Bruce is All right, so you're next on the agenda. So we have Pascal Hardy Company, chart accountants here. And uh, step forward, and you're going to give us uh, the. Uh, Audit financial or draft 2018 uh, financial on the uh, federal gas tax expenditure report. Okay, so the federal gas tax funding annual expenditure report as required by the municipal gas tax agreement for the year ended December 31st, 2018. <coughs> We have audited the Town of Swan Network's compliance as at December 31st, 2018 with the criteria established by the terms and conditions of the Municipal Gas Tax Agreement that came into effect April 1st, 2014 between the province of Manitoba and the Town of Swan River. Management is responsible for the compliance with the criteria established by the provisions of the agreement and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to ensure compliance. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance based on our audit. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Those standards require that we plan and perform an audit to obtain reasonable assurance whether the town of Swanover complied with the criteria established by the provisions of the agreement referred to above. Such an audit includes examining on a test basis, evidence supporting compliance, evaluating the overall compliance with these criteria, and where applicable, assessing the accounting principles used and significant estimates made by management. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. In our opinion, the Federal Gas Tax Revenue Annual Expenditure Report presents fairly, in all material respects, the funding and expenditures for the year ended December 31st, 2018, in compliance with the Municipal Gas Tax Agreement. Moving on to the annual expenditure report for the year ended December 31st, 2018. The unspent fund balance at the beginning of the year was $241,152. The amount received from the province of Manitoba was $221,050. Interest earned came in at $4,177. The expenditures on eligible projects uh, was just the local roads in, 2000, in 2018, and that was $212,646. So the unspent fund balance at the end of 
was $253,733. And that is it for the report. Are there any questions on any of that? Pretty straightforward. It is. <laughs> Much easier than the full-blown challenge one ever wrote. Let's talk about it. All right. So if there's no questions, then thank you. I, I see that there's the CFO's summary of comments there, but that's basically on the uh, projects that we have done. So. Yeah, I think he provided and he provided us with that same summary of, and so you're already aware, you know, which roads or which pro sidewalks or which projects uh, were uh, utilized, the, what the funds were utilized for, and of course the, the rules are in place as to what expenditures are allowable to use the gas tax money for, which aren't, and so our audit says we looked at all those expenditures and, uh, you know, we're, we determined that uh, everything to be expended based on the rules. Good. So, I guess if there's no questions or comments, so thank you very much for coming up. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy your evening. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to 6, 6.1, you have the copy of the AMM uh, response letter to the letter that I had sent in regards to uh, the AMM last fall uh, with the uh, speakers and naming the uh, members of the opposition and their time and so forth. So I uh, need that on your on your time there. <clears throat> 6.2 Swan Valley Employment and Training uh, project project funding approval letter. So we have uh, we've covered everything there from my understanding then with this letter that we are in compliance to everything that the province has asked us for. So we uh, we're moving ahead with that uh, project continuing on in the town of Swan River, so which we are completely grateful for. Um, and then of course, uh, 6.3, Town of Swan River Recreation Work Crew Project Funding Approval Letter. Again, uh, some funding dollars there for uh, recreation. Six, and I don't know if there's any comments as I move along, just raise your hand. Uh, 6.4, we have the grand opening. Sapatoya and Cree Nation is opening up their gas bar on Main Street next uh, Thursday. So there's an invitation for all to attend and also a meal after their grand opening. 6.5, the RM is star, start burn. Request, burn. Sorry, Stuart Burn, requesting amendments to the Endangered Species Act. Councillor Friesen. It's in the paper two different dates. Do we know for sure when that gas bar is opening? The, this is the grand opening. Uh, they're having a soft opening, I believe, on the 15th and, or, sorry, the 15th, on 22nd. 22nd. And then they're having the actual grand opening on the 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Stuart Byrne. So there's the letter there. I guess that's, um, again, just a letter there. If we, we can discuss that. Uh, uh, later committee meeting if we choose or what we have thoughts about that <clears throat> and of course you'll see that there are copies of the resolutions on those endangered species and what their concerns are what okay <laughs> moving on 7.1 superintendent works report Sorry, good counselor. Or, could just to crawl, hold that at six just for one second. We need a motion to accept the communication. I just realized that uh, it wasn't put in there. Okay. Second. We need a motion to receive all the communication. Oh, we need a motion to receive them. That you're going to do them there for that now? You're gonna do a resolution? Yeah, I'm just doing it. Okay, right now. Well, we'll just wait then.
opponents were waiting for that. Any comments on any of those? That's what it's all said in there. Result that all communications be received as information moved by Councillor Mentoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. No, I have I don't want to. I, I'm still thinking you weren't here. So it's a, oh, yeah. Mentoni. He snuck, he snuck, he snuck in. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So my apologies to no, everyone. I was late. That's okay. Result that the superintendent works report be received. Uh, moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion, questions, comments to Mr. Poole. Just so Council knows, the on Third Street where we we're having issues with the semi trucks parking in front of the uh, business, stopping their access. We did paint those yellow, and the bylaw officers were informed to keep a quick eye on that. Council Memorial. Um, two things, Mr. Poole. The, how are we with the asphalt guys? Are they on mark? Uh, yeah, they, they planned on finishing the private work uh, today. It's just, in the, I guess our schedule is patches for the rest of the week in the airport next week. But it's, it's all dependent on the weather. So within the forecast, there's rain every day this week. So that may be pushed back. So if it, if it pours rain, obviously we won't be paving. Uh, let's see how it goes. Okay. And then second question with the line painting, um, with putting yellow up in the, on the T's of the intersections, I noticed that there was some like weren't painted before or we taken an inventory to uh, make sure that all our T intersections have that no painting? Yeah, we have a map for the guys. And, Okay. Councillor Friesen and then Councillor Wintoni. I just wanted to thank Derek for getting the pump connected back up at the cemetery. I've had nothing but complaints and now it's all good, so thank you. Just a comment. Okay. Could you go, sir? Councillor Wintoni and then Councillor White. Um, Mr. Poole is uh, on the cemetery as well. My uh, compliments on getting that pump fixed. I, have been fortunate enough to hear that it was fixed, so I appreciate that. Just in regards, my other question in mowing, just the question that we once talked about, and I'm not sure where that went, was um, being able to trim around signs and things like that on the highways coming in and out um, with the work crew that we that we did have. Um, I know that there's some thing, some tasks that the work crews are doing for other organizations, which is great. I have no issues, but it'd be nice to, 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 to maybe get them to do that. If they, I mean, we do it, such a good job mowing, but then we, like I said, the corners around the signs would be, would be great to have that trimmed up and cleaned up on, on Highway 10 coming in. I know that yeah. it might not be our responsibility, but it might what we're working on is, is something on paper instead of them just saying at the entrance is trimming on a tree. And so they're not, they need to know how far to go. So we're trying to give them just limits on what to do because they could spend three weeks doing a lot of things. So it is being looked at. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I ask. Yeah. Thank you. That it. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Council, I just uh, have for the comments of other councilors relative to the uh, cemetery. It's a special place. It's a revered space. I think it's a big responsibility for us as council to make sure we can look after it to the best of our abilities. Uh, but that pump uh, fix, which is wonderful, uh, perhaps, I don't know, could we put that in our uh, town page? If there's a, I had a couple of questioning our commitment to the cemetery because there really wasn't even no any water there. I don't know, because they'll find out when they go. Okay, thank you. Oh, we, we could. Sure, no. Okay. Yeah. Any further questions? Councillor Friesen? All in favor? Opposed? Opposed? Okay, carry. <clears throat> 8.2. So, uh, I'll have the reports here. So, uh, you missed a little bit of seven. Look at that. Uh, here. Sorry. My computer is 
doing some wonky stuff here. I don't have a 7.2. You can say points, you know. Oh, okay. No. So just refresh and then you're on 8.2. I'm on 8.2. Fire. Okay. Do I not? 8.21. Do I not have a resolution there for that? Resolution there. We will have it in a second. Okay, no problem. Up until today, uh, the managers of the departments have been putting motions in, so it wasn't. Result of the July 2019 fire report be received. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? <clears throat> Any questions? There's a the correction, it's June. Oh, June, sorry, June 2019. Yes. All in favor? It's carried. Result that the handy van report for June 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result that the report on the arena floor progress be received. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Questions? Councillor like, Delorier. Looks like uh, it's going well. What the, what's the plan for, how do you get the ice out of here in the spring? Uh, basically, we're actually waiting for pre-age back for their best option, but a bunch of us have put our heads together and it would either be uh, finding the low spots pumping it out it's not like it's going to all come in mm -hmm. two hours and that's that's one option the other option is monitoring the cost of what, what it's going to to cost to keep the ice in and uh, we, we're, we're guesstimating that it, you know it's going to the overall cost to, to run the ice is going to be between 30 and 50 percent cheaper than what it was and the, the big question is is do we take it out at all if it is going to be a a massive mess. <clears throat> Other communities that have this system, have we talked to them on how they take their ice out? That's who we pray each Okay. Is um, if we do have to keep the ice in, are we going to cover it, like insulate it to keep the... We would, well, we shave it down as much as we could, just to get rid of as much ice as we could. But, uh, yeah, we're, we would have to pay for... That's, what I mean, that's, that's kind of a consideration that Patty has in her report here. Okay. Uh, I read a white paper a couple days ago about the two different types of flooring for rinks and uh, and uh, many communities have selected just to uh, leave the sand floor ice in year round, uh, which may be an option for us. We're quite far north, so I mean it's we don't we don't have an extended summer or anything. So, so. 
something. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Council reports. Councilor Freezing. Uh, I know. Communities in Blue meeting. Um, Mr. Benita is waiting to get an invoice for the grant that we received, and we won't give the money until they get an invoice. And Mr. McClurg out at the greenhouse doesn't want to give us an invoice until he's done watering, so I'll have to talk to Terry and just ask him to wait. Uh, Communities of Care had a meeting the other day, and uh, they have a Barb Gemmel coming up here. If we are interested in a strategic planning meeting, she could accommodate us on September the 20th, if we're interested. I don't know if we are or not, but if we are, then we got to let them know. Can you repeat that again? I didn't quite catch that. Barb Gemmel is coming up to do a Communities of Care strategic meeting okay. planning thing. Okay. And she would stay and do us if we wanted her to on September 20th. Okay. Um, I had someone um, actually with James Wigley requesting a large uh, needle receptacle out by the CMHA building on the highway. If who, who do we see about getting something like that put out? I know we have the small ones in the washrooms and out in the boat, but he said there's bigger ones and he would like one out there because they're finding needles constantly. You should probably let her and send it to the town for as an official request it would be the proper yeah. Is that the way he should do it? And he wants one for his own building? He wants it out in that parking lot. So why do, is that a CMHA building? Yeah. I can't see any J by one. The town can they just go ahead and buy one and stick it there? Of course, yeah. They can get them from the Elias and PMH. The town's not going to supply everybody's. If they want our design, like the non breakable ones, then we would sell one to them. Okay, I'll just I'll tell them that. And also some complaints that the kids are scared over at the park now because they seem to be finding needles over there and I don't know what we could do about that. It's just something that came up. The kids that used to always go to the skate park are not going anymore because they're afraid. I don't know what to do about that. Any suggestions? You, you said that kids are concerned about going to the skate park because of the needle problem there? And yeah, that and maybe some bullying happening. They just don't feel comfortable going there. Um, I think that's all I have. In the Royal Parade, I have a couple of people on board that Communities in Bloom is going to also share the float, so we'll get decorated on the Thursday morning before Friday, so if anybody wants to come and help decorate, feel free. Okay, thank you. Council Warren. Uh, no, nothing really much this uh, period, just on last Friday I attended the uh, MLA Woolchuck's uh, barbecue, um, either appreciation, camping, kickoff, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it looked to be well attended and while I was there, uh, it was a festivity put on uh, very well by Mr. Wotuk, or Wochuk and made some good connections with some uh, government contacts with theirs to bring forward uh, some of the issues that we have in the town and they reached out back post um, that evening uh, looking for more information. Councillor Lentoni. Um, I was a little rushed today, so I didn't get my notes all done up, but um, it was a quieter week for myself, uh, just filing some paperwork and finishing up some files that I did have with that were ongoing. 
just in regards to the rodeo, there is a tent coming. Just a reminder to Mr. Poole, Mr. Kroll, that um, hydro and water needs to be inspected and, and marked. Otherwise, they will not put up that tent. They will call me when they're coming up on Wednesday, or sorry, Tuesday. Um, and then I just need to let somebody know. Phyllis, I think I'll just send you a message that they're here. And if you can look after telling them where it goes. I'd love to. All right. Um, Tell them where to where to put it up. But that does they didn't mean it like that. Where, where to put it up? Um, they'll put it up and then they'll take it down. Obviously, but that's all included in what we um, worked on on your behalf. Thank you. Um, the cemetery. Thank you for looking after that as well, Mr. Poole. And other than that, I don't have any other notes and information at this time. Councilor Dory. Uh, I had a library committee meeting last uh, Monday dealing with some uh, inconsistencies in our uh, in our pay scale so working on some uh, proposals there and uh, other than that nothing to uh, report okay. Councilor White and just a couple of quick ones uh, relative to the council memorial uh, with, with the meeting with the government people. I had the opportunity to talk to the premier, and, and one of the concepts that he was talking about there was an individual from Swan River who was looking at developing a, an enterprise with the government of Manitoba, and one of the many facets was forestry. So they were talking also with the LP and SPL about that possibility. So I remain optimistic that something might happen there. Uh, other person was there was uh, Greg Nesbitt, he's a special assistant to the Minister of Health and the Council of will also got us here and we're talking about the CT scan and we keep hearing the wonderful, why wouldn't we do it? I said, well, show me the money. I said, we're showing you the money, show me the CT scan. So we remain optimistic. Uh, for those who are available, uh, Council Morgan and I are going to Dauphin on Thursday for a tour of the new uh, emergency uh, entranceway to an operations room at the hospital. Uh, a thought I would like to throw out to, to the team is, I'll be whatever time most of us love it. Is it possible to meet earlier, or is it difficult for us to meet earlier? Like on, on, six what day? on the Tuesday nights. In the future, you mean? Well, oh, just for the, the summer council meetings. Yeah, this six thirty, for example. Does anybody find six thirty too early? Because maybe everybody wanted six thirty. I do, but if everybody else does, that's fine. Then we're out of it earlier and we can spend time while there's some sunlight with our families. Holy smokes, this is, I'm being optimistic then. Is, is anybody in opposition to trying at our next council meeting at 6 30 instead of 7 30? We would have procedural, so we're going to have to change that. So there's a you can't just change it by word. <coughs> we'd have to have changes to the procedural stuff. Do, do do so until. Later, so okay. Just mm -hmm. a thought, maybe for next year. Through council motions, though. Yeah. Maybe a thought for next year for the summer period, anyway. Well, many municipalities go to one council meeting during the summer. I like that too. We can talk about it next week at council meeting. Okay, council yeah. Would you put that on, please? Time of meeting and numbers of meeting for uh, summer meetings. Just a thought uh, an individual brought up to me, she said, I'm not sure how you correlate the bills for recycling. This individual feels that once every two months the machine will pick up their blue box and go, because they're very prudent and they don't have a lot of recycling. Yet I, for example, may need it once a week. And yet, hypothetically, we're all paying the same price. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, with recycling, yes. So being a user pay kind of person, is, is that a, a difficult concept for a user pay? So if I'm using it for every week, they work on me and then other, he gets his once every two months and we pay the same. Is there a way to, to compensate for that? That's what was recommended at the committee level. That's fine. It, it was not chosen to go that way. So cool. it, yeah. it, is, it, it is on everybody. It's on assessment. So. So, so the person asked me to bring it up and I did so. Uh, the other thing that talked about, I see the letter here from the doctors uh, relative to the possibility of uh, doing some research and where, where they should build. Part of that process was contingent on buying the property next to them. And we discussed whom 
was going to get the offer of first refusal. I don't understand the principle that well. It was that their job, was it our job somehow? I thought that was to go back to the doctors. Did that happen? Uh, it's my understanding that it really isn't. We don't want the property. The doctors want the property. So really to get the right of first refusal for somebody it would be the doctors who would approach the homeowner um, if they wanted to do that sometime in the future. I think I have absolutely no problem with that as long as we have communicated that to the doctors. Because I, I sort of felt at our last meeting that there was a possibility we would do that. It was abstract at best. But if they don't know that and they're waiting for us to do that, that's not good. It just as a no, we're not the council for the doctors either. Yeah. So um, it's there to hire people to actually find these things out for them so they can move ahead with it. So that we as a town can accommodate what they're going to ask us to do. Council so Antonio, a question? A comment on that. I did send, after that meeting, I did send an email to Megan and to Lisa in regards to the information that was discussed that it was that the town didn't want to take tackle on that responsibility and that was something for them. Also, in the information that was relayed to them was the information that would be coming from the town of Swan River in regards to the process of what would happen for closing off that back alley and procedures and expectations and costs and things like that. So I'm not sure if Mr. Cool did send that over to them or not, to the information in regards to... To both situations. No, to, well, I guess in, in, in the situation of closing off the back alley, the other one is pretty straightforward. I don't think that anything else needs to be sent there, but it was just the information on and costs and what it would entail for them if they wanted to go that route. You mean the information that was given to like the, the, the process? The yes, process? yes. I can send that, yeah. Yeah, so it was the 4000 I can't remember, it was $4,000, and it would have to go through the procedures, the exact procedures that you discussed with council. Um, I thought that that was going to... I may have sent that, I'd have to get back to you. Okay. I, th I thought you did, but I, I yeah. it's been a while, I, and I don't remember. I can confirm that. Okay. Your report. And you did send the note relative to the offer. That is correct, yes. Thank you very much for doing that. That's it for me, thank you. Okay. Uh, just for me, um, basically, that we, and we'll talk about a little bit later on here, and that was the idea that we talked about during the um, foundation uh, uh, committee talking about the doctors and, and they wanted to do the study. So we did have a meeting about that, we'll have a discussion about that a little bit later on. <clears throat> the other thing was the topic about the cemetery, and I did have uh, a couple people approach me, and I went down to the lo uh, to the cemetery, and and actually Mr. Crow came down there as well with me last week, and we walked through it a little bit. So there are some concerns there, and I think that we're going to have to have some further discussion as a committee as a whole to talk about what our plans are moving forward and what changes might be necessary. So. Um, for those that are people that are thinking about, you know, maybe we're not doing anything about it, but we're going to start looking at that and, and seeing what we need to do as the next steps. That's it for me. So uh, we have the CO report. I see that Mr. Crow has written his report there, so you can uh, review that. I don't know if you want to discuss anything on that or if any questions, so go ahead. Generally, what I do is just ask if there's any questions on the written report. Um, it, it's standard procedure usually that uh, the CAO give a written report once a month. Um, so at one meeting it's a verbal report and the next minute meeting it's a written report so that it takes into account pretty much everything that's going on in the background that uh, you guys might be interested in. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that was um, raised alarm bells with Councillor Gray earlier today was that I, I put on the procurement policy was going to be at this meeting uh, but it, it, it's not actually, we're still reviewing it and we're hoping to have it at the Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, not so much that you have to review it at that meeting, but you could take it home and start looking it through if, if you don't want it, you know, because it is a, a long document. Right. So, um, anyway, that's, that's about it. Uh, the rest of it's pretty, pretty plain and simple, really. Okay. No question, our Councillor White does. Just a comment, thank you so much. I love it in print form. Just 
I'm not a terribly challenged. It creates a problem, but I also can't have it as a reader that makes more sense. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Okay. So moving on, uh, 8.1. Uh, you got to run. Sorry? You, you got to run, sure. except my, my uh, oh. report. I missed that. That's new. Result the July CAO report be received, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Council Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the Northwest Roundup and Exhibition being held July 25th to Ju July the 28th, 2019, in the town of Swan River, be declared a community event. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Discussion? Go ahead. We're having someone cleaning the hall. Are we picking up that tab or what's the plan? Who's having someone clean the hall? Well, the hall's got to be cleaned after each thing, right? Yeah. So who does that? Lana? No. I told, Mark? I told Lana. No? Absolutely not. Okay. So then Mark will be doing it. He'll be wanting $100 a night. Are we going to pay him or is the Ag Society going to pay him? Lana was told to the Ag Society, whoever, whoever was renting it out, that she cannot be responsible for cleaning the entire hall. So they, have to, they have to clean up their floors and their tables and right. their, their stuff like that. So it'll be somebody that's hired and his name is Mark. And do we pay him? As in we? I think the answer, that's the answer that the Ag no. Society would be responsible the for. The Ag Society is responsible for that. Because they were responsible for cleaning the arena last year. So. The guys at the arena, yeah, they cleaned last year. Well, the, if we say yes, Lana's going to be doing it all by herself. She's going to be up every night. No, she wouldn't have to do it herself. So. No. So, so the town used to clean at the arena? Yeah. The arena staff cleaned. At the arena, after the Friday night dance, after the Saturday night dance, after the pancake breakfasts. So now they're all going to be at the hall. So who does that? It's not going to be Lana. It will be. No. That's what she was worried about, and I, I, I told her. I said, whoever's renting that place, we have somebody that will. Trip. We have somebody that will do it. It's just so who's paying them? We're talking two hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a night. So two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Three, Friday. So we used to have public work staff in on overtime on the weekend to clean the arena. No, no. Arena staff. Or arena, arena staff. Or not public works. Arena staff. I mean. Yes, the arena staff did, but they did shifts. I don't think they were considered overtime. Like somebody was there until a certain mm -hmm. amount of time, and then somebody was there after the dances. So would I have that cost last year, anyways? Well, yes, exactly. And this year we're not going to have the arena staff doing it. No, and it probably less cost to pay this Mark fellow 200 bucks. I think it's just two nights. Friday night, Saturday night. Friday night and Saturday night. I, I, what are you saying, I'm not saying it. We're, 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 <laughs> we're, get, we're getting out of hand here. Okay. Councillor Wintoni. I'm confused as to what the, the question that we're asking. I mean, it... When you rent the hall, or anybody rents the hall, it's your job, your responsibility as a renter to clean, you know, the garbage. But it's the facility that to clean the floors. I mean, that's your job is to put pile your chairs, stack your tables, clean up your garbage, take out your garbage. But it's the hall or wherever you rent to clean the floors in terms of scrubbing and mopping and things like that. So I don't know why that's. She will do that. Oh, it is, so it is the garbage and tables. Oh, well, then the, I mean, I think that it's the responsibility of the person. If that's what we're talking about, then it's the responsibility of the actual person renting the hall to, to look after it in terms of cleaning the floors and scrubbing it and mopping, I think, is the job of the owner of the hall. Are they renting well, the hall? Councillor Morio. Sorry. So the, but the question is, is the Ag Society is not truly renting the hall as a normal renter, they're being afforded the building in exchange or as a replacement for the arena, they're not a true renter. But in the past, and for the arena, I guess, to, to who cleaned up the garbage there? Councilor Free. The arena staff. The arena staff did. And I don't think they're going to want to come down to the hall. 
I just need to be able to tell them that, yes, Mark, you can do it. You'll get paid 100 bucks a night, and he'll come and he'll clean all the garbage, and he'll clean, set tables, and, or move tables, and set chairs. And I'll put a motion forward that the town covered the $200 to pick up the garbage. Mark Simbolock is his name. I mean, he does that for a living. That's his. Okay. I'll second him. Okay, this way. <clears throat> Councilman Tony. Can you confirm, Mr. Poole, before this resolution goes forward that it was arena staff in the past that did, were paid to do that job? I can tell you. I don't know. I have As to go volunteers, volunteers or? Not volunteers. Yeah, two or three. Sorry? Two or three. Two or three. I would take two or three. Is that correct? Oh, sorry. It's 200. It's 200. Sorry. Oh, it's three. They, because I remember a couple of years, there was a bigger kerfuffle about who's going to have to be there to work. Because, I mean, they were getting paid. Q would know that offhand. So would Patty. Patty would know. Yeah. Well, if it is, this will be cheaper. I yeah, would have paid more than $200. Exactly. To arena staff. Because you, you, there was two or three of them had to work because they had to clean up everything to get ready for pancake breakfast the next morning. So they had to clean tables, set chairs, tables. Yeah, this is definitely cheaper. For next year, we'll just have to remember that. Then we don't have to do another resolution that just um, have some kind of an agreement written with the Egg Society. Okay. And it was when Tony Reason? When Tony. Morial. Morial. Uh, White. Morial. White, sorry. Well, I couldn't have got that more wrong. <laughs> Resolved that the town of Swanner pay the whole cleaning charge of $200 for two nights of the Northwest Round of an Exhibition for 2019. Moved by Cut. In the hall, can you see that? Sorry. Do we just assume it's in the hall cleaning? No, oh, it's in the veterans it's hall cleaning. Veterans hall cleaning. <clears throat> hall cleaning? Okay. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor White. Further discussion? All in favor? Eight point two. I have their table and chair rentals. Uh, there's no motion there, but I guess there's discussion on that. If there is a resolution to come forward, um, we have the paperwork here. We use the on this on the table and chairs. Yes. For the golf course. Yes. Okay, so go ahead. Um, so we had, I had um, Mr. Erlinson come and see me. Um, I was looking for you, but you were still away. So I got him. Um, and just in regards to the table and chair, or table and chairs, or table rentals, I wasn't, I didn't bring my notes on it. Um, he's just concerned that they were billed 600 and some dollars. There it is. Um, four tables and chairs for the Bonanza and was looking for uh, a donation, I guess, in, the, in this regard. I'm not sure what was done in the past. If he didn't tell me, I don't remember because I didn't bring my notes of what happened in the past. Um, but he was adamant that he brought, they picked them up, they hauled them, they, they, then they hauled them to the curling ring uh, for grad um, and was looking for a reduced rate or a donation in that regard. And I said I would bring it to council. Here I am bringing it to council. Okay. So unless you're bringing a, a resolution forward on that matter, then uh, there's nothing to discuss. Council Morio. I think it falls in the same bin as the fish and hats thing. We denied the 
we're at there and this is the same type of fundraising thing so um, we're not in a position to offer that grant request or funding request for that. Okay. All right, so I don't see any appetite for that, so we'll move on to 8.3. And that is the, go ahead. I, I guess on the, I, I, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not advocating that we pay the table and chairs, chair rentals, but uh, do we let them know when their bill for table and chair rentals comes to more than, what, what if they could rent the whole hall for 800 bucks, or the whole arena for 800 bucks, their table and chair rental comes to more than that, do we say, hey, you know, you can rent the whole hall for 800 bucks? Because yeah. I, I guess... You know, we should be showing them their the path of least their options or the path of least resistance as far as how they can save themselves some money. I don't I don't know what their bill came to, but but obviously some combination of table and chair rentals will come up to what it would more than what it would cost to rent the entire uh, arena. So I hope our staff would would uh, indicate to them, hey, this is maybe a cheaper option for you. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion uh, over the past couple of weeks about this, um, and a proposal I think is coming forward at the Committee of the Whole from um, the Rec Department um, to uh, maybe change the policy. Uh, I would suggest one of the, the items might be that our, our per item price is probably higher than we need to. I discussed this with, uh, with Derek and Patty this past week, if we if we take into total life cost of these things, and that the fact that it's uh, it's really a service to the community, what we need to gain back on those table and chairs is just the replacement of those table and chairs over a set number of years, so that when we have to replace the tables and chairs, there's a pot there that has that amount in it or close to it, so that uh, the town isn't extra tax to replace the the table and chairs. But if you look at the numbers that are going forward for the single bill, um, that would probably add up to way more than what those table and chairs would cost if we were going to replace them every five years or something like that. Right? So just just a different way of looking at the costs on a great long term. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, then we can move on to 8.3. That's the concerns about the sidewalk between the 4th and 8th Avenue on 2nd Street South. We have a report there from Mr. Poole. If there's any discussion or comments there, Mr. Poole, on that? Uh, just that the request came forward. Uh, I just want to explain to Council that uh, the engineering department has put a pretty large focus on repairing our sidewalks uh, as opposed to building new. But uh, it, I guess it would, like right now we have we have money in our capital forty thousand dollars in our capital sidewalk program. So this would not cover the full request. So. Uh, I guess as a result, if we were to, to reroute that money into this capital project, we would not be any further on our, our, our hazards and the liabilities of them, and we would also not fully solve this issue this year. So I put out a recommendation that we, we continue to use the $40,000 in 19 for what it was intended for, for sidewalk repairs, and uh, we could add and then, you know, I'm sure we're going to get there in our, in our planning sessions coming this fall and our budget sessions uh, to the 2020 capital program if we, if we see this as a priority. So you'll make note of this then in those discussions that we can bring this back up again as far as maybe you know, considering it for 2020? I think so, if that's what, if that's what the wish is. <coughs> I would like to see, I agree with your recommendation, I'd like to see that we continue the work that we have outlined for this year, um, but I definitely want, would like to see um, this move to the capital progr program for 2020 and, and look at it then. I think there is a need for a sidewalk in that area, um, 
So I would like to look at it in 2020 and have and, and support it. Okay. So 8.4 discussion on the uh, straw pulp paper facility, uh, possibly located in the Swan Valley. Um, I, who's bringing that up? Kelsey went to me. Uh, but go ahead, Mr. Crawl. We want a motion to uh, to move the report to the budget meetings. You made one there. Well, I'm just making it. Oh, okay. So I didn't. I'll wait to see that. Who has Mr. Scales' contact number? I'm sure he would like to know the results. I think we have it in an email. Council, Robbie Skills, contact. Robbie Skills. I don't have his contact information. It was in the. I have it on an, on an email. And an email that was sent to council as well as Mr. Crow. Oh, okay. Result of the request be moved to budget deliberations during the 2020 financial plan meetings. Moved by Councillor Mattoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, now back to the discussion about the straw pulp, straw pulp and paper facility. Councillor Mattoni. Um, I don't think. I think at this time that this should be something that is discussed openly. I don't think that we need to may jump to conclusions with it at this time. Jump to a conclusion? The general public and, and others assuming things that may not be true and that something is actually happening. happening. I just don't think that, I think it's in the very early stages and I don't think that that's open, should be open to discuss in public at this point. Okay. That's delicious. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure who brought it on to, it, on to here, but. It was part of a two part request that came in uh, on the sidewalks. Okay. I'm going to keep the rubber skills. Okay. So uh, we can defer that to a committee of the whole as well. So do you need a resolution for that? No. Okay. Uh, 8.5 result of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District audited financial statements for the year ended March 31st, 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. It's right here. Okay. Result that the draft audited, uh, sorry, result that the draft audited federal gas tax funding annual expenditure report for the year ended December 31st, 2018 be approved. Moved by Councillor Mantoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 8.7. So 8.7, that's to discuss the funding for the clinic building expansion investigation. Um, I was at all the meetings that the, um, the committee has been meeting at. I've been there to a few of them, but there has been some that have been with the doctors and, and uh, Councillor White, you can correct me on anything that I make error on, but um, they have come forward and requested that a study be done, an expansion study be done for the clinic and what that might look like. And they're hoping that some of those dollars can become, can, can come out of the doctor recruitment fund, which the, um, the uh, foundation, Health Facility Foundation is uh, kind of in charge of. And so our, our uh, board 
has said that they, they had no problem to support that, but they didn't feel like we had the, um, the uh, we didn't have the approval to, to do that. We felt that we had, because it was doctor recruitment and dollars and, and creating do actual doctors and so forth. So the, the board felt that it needed to have the blessing of all councils or a majority of councils in order to move forward. And this is what this is all about. And everybody's seen the letter from uh, Dr. Burnside about their intentions and they want to kind of go out and, and find quotes on what uh, uh, or RFPs I guess it might be and so anyways at the end of the day um, this is all about if we can get a resolution and pass a resolution or decline a resolution that would support the uh, board to approve or to support um, the doctor uh, the doctor group doing this expansion study. Also right. I, don't know I, I agree with 100% with what you said. I think that's what the money is there for. And it's a pressing issue. If we ever want to have surgeons at, or, and or more anesthetists, they need more space. So I'm 100% in favor of the council. Um, Councilor uh, Tony sat on, I think, some of those uh, committees and as well. I don't know if you have anything to add to that or not. No, I think you explained it. Um, but solidly is it's looking for the support from every municipality every council from each municipality um, to support f funding coming out of, out of out of those funds so i, I think you explained it perfectly fine. Councilor Delorier. i'm not super jumping all over this just for the i don't see why this can't come out of foundation money for if, we, if we're not careful, we're going to get cornered and we're going to end up with a municipal funded doctor's offices. We'll get cornered. You, you, get, you, give a little, you go an inch, go another inch, eventually we'll be building a building. Public pressure. So, you know, this, this is just the first, you know, it's pretty innocuous at this point. But it, I don't see why this can't come out of foundation money and why it has to come out of recruitment money. And recruitment money will we've already made commitments to the province that we have we'd have money there for them for a uh, ct scan if that looks like it you know i i i'd be leaning on the yes side of the fence rather than no side of the fence on that happening but i don't that's just my feeling on it but i guess i just wouldn't want to jeopardize that and i don't know why foundation money can't be used for this we use foundation money to to uh, do the community contribution at the hospital. We've used foundation money to do the community contribution at the existing primary care center. So to say that it's not within the mandate of the uh, foundation, I, I fully realize some foundation money is set aside, set aside for specific purposes, but I but I don't see this as being outside of the general foundation. And I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong. I'd like to see the, the founding documents of the foundation, but. I'm just a little bit leery of putting municipal money into a building that either, in, in both cases, it, it's probably not optimal. It'll either be ours one day or it won't be ours one day, and we're going to put money into it either way. And I don't necessarily want it to be ours. So I, I'm not against the expansion of the clinic, but I don't know if it needs to be municipally funded. And as soon as as soon as we've shown our hand that we're willing to fund it, nobody else is going to show their hand that they're willing to fund it. Uh, Christian, are you saying that you want to see what the founding documents of the foundation have uh, is, or are? Or I don't know why the foundation can't just give the money to the doctors. Well, I think the foundation possibly can, mm -hmm. but right now it was requested to come from the doctor equipment fund. Yeah, it, and that's why I, I understand this came from the doctors, yeah. Right. So, and that's the angle they're going is the recruitment angle, right. and it fits there, but it, I, I, it just scares me a little bit that we're going to, okay, we've given money to this, and now there's going to be there's going to be something that comes out of this, either some design documents or, or another step, and now we're, we're, we're already in, we've already bit the hook. And, uh, Council White, when it comes to the There's a suggestion that I respect my learning council next week. There's a time issue here. We have to, we better get going on all this stuff. I don't think it, the suggestion that it's a hook is that they're doing that deliberately is not fair to these people. I, I think they're, they're just saying, let's get some money. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there's anything nefarious about their intentions at all. They just they just want yeah. more doctors. But I mean, or you know what? If 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 council is fully prepared to go in on on that kind of on funding a building, because that's that, you've been here as long as I I know, and that's how these things start. I think it, that can happen in the future. I, I mean, yeah. In the short term, I would rather deal with this now. Start that process. If something's popping up, they want to pay for a building. We'll discuss that at the time. This is to this discuss. makes it a lot harder to say no once we're fifty k into it. Come no. It makes it a lot harder for other people to say yes after we're fifty k. Council Morio. Um, I totally buy what Council Gloria is saying is because the doctor recruitment fund is a municipally funded fund. Um, so I would be of the opinion that uh, that the ask comes out of the foundation funds first. And if it is turned down there, then we can look at coming out of this fund. But the first ask or request is that it be funded out of the health foundation. Um, just so that we don't have the optics or use that that hook that it's a municipal funded um, project. Um, I agree that it needs to be done. It's and that there are further steps and stuff like that. But uh, maybe that the, this should be as an ask to the health foundations fund first, and then see where that goes from the foundation's perspective. And if it's uh, unsuccessful there, then it can be looked at through the doctor recruitment fund first. After that, Council Winter, Council Winter, then Council Dory. Councillor Dory can go first. So have any other municipalities already jumped on board? Of this? I have not heard yet. There are meet some of them are meeting tonight as well to discuss it. I guess that was my my thought too, and and I understand what you're saying. I do think I, I have a strong opinion that it's that it it, it should be more dark uh, out of the recruitment fund on the basis that every municipality feels the same way. So I don't think that it's in our best interest to 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 say that we on our terms are funding the whole thing, but it's our support and our we give our blessing that it's that it would come out of here proportionately to the other municipalities. The, I, I don't know how to respond to that. I, it would be proportionate no matter what, like, you know, as far, because all the doctors are, or, or the municipalities are putting their dollars equally into the fund, right? But I guess we would only be in if all the other municipalities would support the same resolution. Then yeah, the majority would have to support this coming out of recruitment. But if they didn't support this, then, then we would look at maybe it coming from the foundation. Right. But I think at this time, it's in our best interest that we support it, support it on the behalf, on, on knowing that all the other municipalities are in favor of this. If that doesn't work, then well, I think we don't know if they're in favor. Of this. No, we don't. But I mean, we could be the leaders and say that we are in favor of this, with the condition that all the other municipalities are as well. Well, if that is the condition that the the, the the foundation wanted. Is that it had to be supported by the majority of all councils? So then, I think the request is is that we support it. That's the request, yes. Councilor White. Agree completely because the foundation, the hospital foundation monies, as opposed to the recruitment monies, that's not all all equal or proportionate from all, all the municipalities at all. But this one is all municipalities equally paid. How much do they want? Well, if you if you read, it says that like they figured that it may be in the neighborhood of forty to fifty thousand dollars. They're not exactly sure. They, they said that before they would even proceed, that they would obtain quotes and submit it to us for final uh, approval. This is only to give support support for the board. So it's not even quite as you know like necessarily a slam dunk yet either. Even if we support it. So are they are they looking to get design documents on this like? The Documents. I, sorry, this one is only a feasibility study to see if this is what this letter is referring to, and I, I 
didn't see, but I did that the last meeting that I was at. This was only a feasibility study to see whether or not they should expand at their current location or move to, or if they need something that's going to be a bigger, <laughs> a, whole new a whole new building. So this is only to determine whether or not how much space they need. Yes. I haven't been through a few feasibility studies like that. I, I find that they're kind of hollow in the fact that you can get a consultant to give you whatever kind of justification you want based on the questions you ask him and how you frame those things. It's like we've been through how many feasibility studies where, yeah, of course that's the answer we got back because look at the questions we had or look at, they could, you ask leading questions, you're going to get answers in the direction you want. So, so I, I question the validity of feasibility studies like that. I mean, is it a truly unbiased opinion when the, when the guy who's paying the consultant 50 grand wants it to be in a certain location? I, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think those are a little bit of a waste of money, but I, again, I, I'm not going to say where it should go either. So, Constantly. Um I think they're, they're only following the directions that came back from the Medical Services Committee to begin with. They're following the steps that, because it, their initial thing was just to outright add on or expand their thing. Um, then the, the debate or conversation went to, is that the most appropriate thing or a whole new building and stuff like that. So, um, so they're just following the recommendations that were given to them to have a study to confirm or disprove that expansion is the right thing to do or what's the potentially cheaper option. So, so, but I agree that you can get studies to say whatever you want, but the, um, you can, the, the physicians are just following the procedures that and the step that we requested from them. So. So I think that we go ahead, Councillor Owen. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to say that I I make the motion for the for the resolution. A second. Okay. So what does the resolution say? It's on our six point one. Sorry, eight eight six eight point six point one. Sorry. <laughs> was all the fun Sorry? Creative writing. Yeah, good job. Was all the funds from the G for physical retention and recruitment reserve fund be used to fund Oh, sorry, I didn't say that right. <laughs> Resolve that the funds from the G4 Physician Retention Recruitment Reserve Fund be used to fund an investigative steps and consulting toward discerning and best options for the clinic ex building expansion and is done only in cooperation with the other municipal partners in the clinic. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. All right. Result of the building permits 3119 through 5319 with a total estimated value of $942,650 be received. Moved by Councillor Tony, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Mm. Be, it, be it resolved that the accounts is hereby, she's I can't speak tonight. Be it resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts on check number 24612 to 24651 for a total of $118,807.18. Uh, there's a note there, check number 24612 has been voided to correct to due to an incorrect amount. Payroll ch uh, account checks number 4486 to 4489 and number 4494 to 4496 for a total of 113,554 and 69 cents. And payroll account checks number 4490 at to number 4493 and number 4497 for a total of 14,611 and two cents. 
moved by a counselor, <clears throat> Lentoni, second by counselor, Morio. Discussion? Questions? None? All in favor? It's carried. Oh boy. <clears throat> Whereas under subsections 252, clause E of the Municipal Act, a municipality may, for municipal purposes, use municipal equipment, material, and labor to carry out private works on private property. And whereas under subsections 252.1, clause A, a municipality exercising powers of the nature of those referred to in clauses 252.B, C, and E may set terms and conditions in respect of users, including setting the rates of amounts, of deposits, fees, and other charges, and charging and collecting them. And whereas under subsections 252.2, a charge referred to in clause 1A may be collected by the municipality in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under this act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed below. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the following unpaid amounts be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner. Invoice number 1391, $200, offense notice. Is that all I have to say? That's good. Uh, no, you don't, you don't the address. No? So do I Do I just say the tax roll or just go through this? Just the roll number and the, and the, and the amount. Okay, so roll number 17200. Uh, $200. Uh, again, roll number 17200. Oh, all right, with the taxes. 465. Roll number 17200, $690. Roll number 108660, $100. $7,260.56. $7, $7, $7, roll number 0144300. 545 and 73 cents, total of $9,193.79. Be, be it further resolved that notices be sent to the property owners detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advertising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective August the 1st, 2019. Moved by Councillor McConey. Second by Councillor Friesen. What did I say the first sentence? Just kidding. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? It's scary. That was long. Result of bylaw to amend bylaw 5 2019, setting the rate for taxes for 2019 be read a third time and be passed. Town of Swan River by bylaw number six, 2019. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. This is a recorded vote. All in favor? Against? It's carried. Sure we had no uh, items for camera, I don't think. Here, let me just look here. No, we don't. Result that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio. All in favor? It's Gary. Thank you.